Time for a story. It was a beautiful day on the island of Sobe. The sun was shining and the birds were singing. Thomas had worked hard all morning. He tooted happily to the children as he chuffed back to Tidmouth Chase. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. He had an important special. This afternoon, there is to be a special story time for the children at the library. I need an engine to collect the new storybooks from Maithwaite Station and take them to the library. Thomas wished his hardest that he would be given the special. Listening to stories with the children was his favorite thing to do. Thomas, you will deliver the special. Make sure the books are at the library on time. Thomas was excited. Yes, sir. And Thomas chuffed cheerfully away. Thomas puffed fast along the tracks. I mustn't be late for story time. I'll chuff and I'll puff to be there on time. Thomas steamed into Maithwaite Station. Hello, Thomas. I'm here to collect the new storybooks. We'll have your freight cars ready and two toots of a whistle, Thomas. Thomas saw the storybooks piled high in the two freight cars. There were red books, green books, and blue books. There were big books, small books, square books, and even round books. They look wonderful. Soon, Thomas was coupled up to the freight cars. I must hurry. I have to deliver the storybooks to the library on time. Thomas was very excited. He pumped his pistons and puffed quickly out of the station. Thomas didn't wait for the books to be covered. Thomas steamed quickly along the track. I mustn't be late for story time. I'll chuff and I'll puff to be there on time. The books began to jiggle and joggle, but Thomas didn't notice. Thomas puffed fast towards the junction. He could see the signal ahead was red. I don't want to stop. The children are waiting for their special story time. Then an idea flew into his funnel. I can take the branch line. I know there aren't any junctions on that. So, Thomas puffed quickly down the branch line. Thomas felt very pleased. He chuffed faster and faster, and the books jiggled and joggled more and more. But Thomas didn't notice. I mustn't be late for story time. I'll chuff and I'll puff to be there on time. Thomas raced round the bend. Ahead, there was a sign for works on the track. Oh, bother! I'm sure the works on the tracks won't stop me. So, Thomas puffed faster and faster. Then there was trouble. Workers were mending the broken track. The broken track was very bumpy. Thomas bumped and jumped. The books jiggled and joggled. Then Thomas hit the biggest bump of all. Whoa! Cinders and ashes! The freight cars bounced high in the air. They crashed and bashed. They clattered and shattered down to the tracks. Thomas put on his brakes. The books flew high and wide through the air and landed all over Farmer McColl's field. Oh, my! The freight cars are broken. The storybooks are all over the field, and the children now won't have their special story time. And it's all my fault. I was in such a hurry to be on time, I didn't want to wait. I should have waited for the books to be covered, and I shouldn't have taken the bumpy branch line.
Oh, dear. <sighs> Fizzling fireboxes. What am I going to do? Thomas looked at the storybooks. The sun was shining on them. The books looked even redder and greener and bluer than they had in the freight cars. The storybooks look so pretty in this field. I wish the children could see them. Then an idea flew into his funnel. I'll bring the children to the storybooks. They can have a picnic story time in the sunshine. That really will be special. So Thomas puffed off to collect the children. First, I must collect Annie and Clarabelle. Victor and Kevin were busy at work as Thomas chuffed into the Sodor Steamworks. Hello, Victor. I'm here to collect Annie and Clarabelle. I'm going to take the children to a special picnic story time in the sunshine. That's a wonderful idea, my friend. The children will like that. They always have their best time with you, Thomas. Thomas was pleased Victor and Kevin liked his idea. Later, Thomas huffed happily out of the steamworks with Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas puffed proudly up to the library at the town hall. The children were waiting. They were very surprised to see Annie and Clarabelle instead of cars of storybooks. Today, I'm taking you to an extra special story time. It's a picnic story time in the sunshine. All aboard! <laughs> the children had never had a picnic story time. They thought it was a wonderful idea. Thomas blew his whistle and chuffed cheerfully away. Thomas puffed towards the junction. This time, Thomas waited. Then he took the branch line back to Farmer McCall's field. Thomas chuffed slowly and carefully up to Farmer McCall's field. Here we are, the picnic story time special. The children cheered. They could see all the different colored books in the field. They were very excited. This was the best story time ever. Thomas watched as the children ran onto the field. They each picked up a book and their teacher began to read with them. This is a story, children, all about a little boy. A little boy who didn't like waiting. He didn't like waiting because he thought he'd miss out on all the good things. But then he found out that good things are worth waiting for. As the story began, Thomas looked at all the happy children. He smiled his biggest smile. The children's picnic story time really is worth waiting for. Splish, splash, splosh. It had been raining and pouring on the island of Sodor. The engines were splattered and splashed with mud. Thomas liked the rain. It splish splashed on his boiler and pitter pattered on his paintwork. Thomas and Rosie had biffed and bashed all day at the shunting yards. Now it was time to go. Come on, Rosie. I'll race you to Tidmouth Sheds. The two friends puffed along the tracks, straight through a very big puddle. Thomas and Rosie were splashed from footplate to fender in muddy rainwater. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Then, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Thomas reversed slowly. Then he pumped his pistons. Here I come, Rosie. Splish, splash, splash! <laughs> That's a good game. Here I come, Thomas. Splish, splash, splash! <laughs> <laughs> 
muddy water splattered everywhere. Then Sir Topham had arrived. He had some important news. Alicia Botti is to sing at a concert in the town hall. The concert will be followed by a grand tea. That's exciting. What fun! Thomas, you must go straight to the washdown. Then you are to collect Miss Botti and myself from Dryar Station. We will be waiting for you. Yes, sir. Rosie, you must collect Annie and Clarabelle and take them to Dryar for Thomas. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. See you later, Rosie. And Thomas and Rosie chuff quickly away. Thomas pulled up at the junction to the washdown. He saw a very big puddle on the other track. Charlie was waiting right by it. He was very muddy. Splashing Rosie was such good fun. I'm sure Charlie would like my game too. And I'm sure I have time for another puddle before the washdown. So Thomas didn't take the track to the washdown. He took the track through the middle of the very big puddle. Here I come, Charlie! Splish, splash, splush! <laughs> Bust my buffers! That's a good game! Thomas huffed happily on. Hooray! This is fun! Now Thomas wanted to find more puddles. He couldn't wait to play his game with other engines. At the next junction, Thomas waited to chuff left to the washdown. Then he saw a very big puddle on the right track. Emily was waiting. Emily's muddy already. I'm sure she'd like my game, and I'm sure I have time for another puddle before the washdown. Here I come, Emily! Splash, splash, splash! <laughs> Muddy rainwater had splooshed all over Emily and all over Emily's flower cars. Fizzling fire boxes! I have to take this flower to the bakery to make the cakes for Alicia Body's tea. Now Thomas has ruined it. Thomas didn't know he had splashed Emily's flower cars. This is fun. Splish, splash, splosh. I'll soon need a wash. <laughs> and Thomas chuffed on, chuckling. At the next junction, Thomas waited to chuff to the washdown. Then he saw a very big puddle right beside James. James is muddy already. I'm sure he'd like my game. And I'm sure I have time for just one more puddle before the washdown. Here I come, James! Splish! Splash! Splosh! <laughs> and Thomas steamed away laughing. Muddy rainwater had splooshed all over James. And all over the ripe strawberries on his flatbed. Blistering boilers! These strawberries were for Alicia Botti's cakes! Now they're ruined! Thomas didn't know he had splashed James's strawberries. This is fun! Splish, splash, splosh! I'll soon need a wash! And Thomas puffed on happily. Thomas chuffed up to the next junction. Now it was getting late. I know there'll be a very big puddle along the track by the river. I'm sure I have time for one last puddle before the washdown. So Thomas took the left track that went along the river. Ahead of him was a very big puddle. My, this is the biggest puddle ever. Here I come. Splish, splash, splash. Then there was trouble. Muddy water flew high into the air and splooshed down all over Alicia Botti and Sir Topham Hatt. Thomas. Thomas screeched to a stop and reversed slowly. He saw that he had splish, splash, sploshed Alicia Botti and Sir Topham Hatt. Cinders and ashes! Look what you've done to Miss Botti. She's soaked. Also, Thomas, I hear from the dairy manager that you ruined the flour and strawberries for Miss Botti's grand tea. This is a disaster. Thomas felt terrible. He tried to puff forward, 
but he couldn't. Oh, no. The big puddle had put out his firebox. This game isn't fun anymore. It's all gone wrong. Then, Thomas heard Rosie's whistle. Rosie, please help me. I've splish splash sploshed into trouble. Oh, dear, Thomas. Of course I will. Don't worry. Rosie heaved and huffed Thomas onto dry tracks. With my dry coal, Thomas, your boiler will soon be bubbling. Thank you, Rosie. Now, I can't go to collect Sir Topham Hat and Alicia Body. Would you take my special for me? Of course I will. I'll go right away. Later, Thomas was once more steaming happily. He pulled up at a junction. There was a very big puddle on the right track. Look at that big puddle. It's perfect for splish splash sploshing. No, I'm not going to splish splash splosh anymore. I must make sure that Alicia Body's grand tea is on time. And Thomas puffed along the left track to the bakery and away from the big puddle. Thomas arrived just as James and Emily had delivered fresh strawberries and flour to the bakery. Your silly game means we'll be late for the concert. No, you won't. I'll wait here for the cakes. Then I'll deliver them. You can go to the washdown. Then you'll both be clean for the concert. Thank you, Thomas. Now I'll be shiny and best and gleam more than the rest. Thomas puffed in with the fresh strawberry cakes for the grand tea. You're just in time, Thomas. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry I caused confusion and delay. Rosie puffed up to Thomas. I found another puddle. It's perfect for our game. We can play again. No thank you, Rosie. I think I've done enough splish splash sploshing for one day. Steamy Sodor. All the engines on Sodor like to be really useful. They huff and they puff to do their best for Sir Topham Hatt's railway. And sometimes that means doing a job they have never done before. One morning, Sir Topham Hatt had a new job for Thomas. Victor has to go to the transfer yards. He has to see one of the little engines. He will be away all day. You must look after the steamworks, Thomas. Victor will tell you all you need to know. Make sure you listen carefully. Yes, sir. Thomas was excited. The Sodor Steamworks is one of my favorite places on the island. Today, I'm going to be in charge. That's a very important job, Thomas. Good luck. Thank you, Percy. And Thomas puffed proudly away to the Steamworks and his new job. Victor was waiting for Thomas at the steamworks. Thomas was very excited. His boiler bubbled and his firebox fizzed. Hello, my friend. This is a big day for you. The steamworks will be very busy. Not too busy for me, Victor. I like being busy. <laughs> That's good, my friend. Now, when an engine comes in, you have to listen carefully to their problem. If you need help, ask Kevin. That's right, Thomas. When you're in a fix, look no further. Just ask Kevin. It'll save you bother. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Are you listening, Thomas? Yes, Victor. But Thomas was too excited to listen. He wanted to get on with his very important job. Don't worry, Victor. I know just what to do. Hurry, Victor. You'll be late for the little engines. Very well, my friend. Good luck. And Victor steamed away. Thomas was now in charge. Soon, Spencer steamed sulkily into the steamworks. His shiny silver paintwork was scratched and scuffed. Spencer was surprised to see Thomas. Uh, where's Victor? He's away today. I'm in charge. Spencer was worried. Oh my, Spencer. You are in a mess. I'll check you over from wheels to whistle. Put Spencer up on the hoist, please, Kevin. Kevin was worried. Are you sure, boss? I mean, Thomas? 
I don't think Spencer needs to go on the hoist. I mean, he needs a repaint, boss. But Thomas wasn't listening to Kevin. He was too excited. He was in charge of the steamworks. Put Spencer up on the hoist, Kevin. Over here, Spencer. <laughs> Please, if you don't mind. Please, <laughs> thank you. So, Spencer huffed huffily to the hoist. Then, Henry chuffed in. Henry wasn't mm -hmm. well. He spluttered and stuttered. He wheezed and sneezed. <laughs> Henry was surprised to see Thomas. What are you doing here, Thomas? Victor is away today. I'm in charge. Henry sighed. Then, he wheezed. <laughs> then, he sneezed. Footplates and fenders. I know just what's wrong with you, Henry. You have been given the wrong coal. Henry gasped. No, Thomas. It's not my... <laughs> but Thomas wasn't listening. Don't worry, Henry. We'll have you puffing proudly in no time. Kevin, bring over some of Henry's special coal, please. But... but what about Spencer, boss? But Thomas wasn't listening. Quick as you can, Kevin. So Kevin trundled to the coal. Spencer sat sniffly by the hoist. Henry <gasps> spluttered and stuttered. And Thomas felt pleased and proud. I like being in charge of the steamworks. Then, James steamed snootily in. Straw and twigs blocked his funnel. Why are you here, Thomas? Victor is away today. I'm in charge. Bubbling boilers, you are in a mess. What happened to you? I can't puff properly. <laughs> I know just what you need. Kevin! Yes, boss? I mean, Thomas? James needs a new funnel. No, I don't. But Thomas wasn't listening to James. But what about Henry's coal and Spencer on the hoist? Thomas wasn't listening to Kevin. Find the spare funnel, please. Kevin was now very confused. To find the funnel, he had to put down Henry's coal. But first, he had to raise Spencer on the hoist. It was all too much for Kevin. Oh, dear, boss. Uh, Thomas. Don't worry, Kevin. I'm in charge. Then there was trouble. Kevin reeled and rolled back towards the hoist. And with a biff and a bash, he hit a big green button. That made Spencer shudder into the air. Trembling tracks, what's happening? Kevin gasped. <gasps> Heaving hooks! Sorry, Spencer. Then Kevin dropped Henry's coal right in front of Henry's nose. Bust my boiler and crashing coals. Kevin rocked and rolled into James. Mind my shiny red paintwork. James was so upset he blew the biggest puff of steam he had ever blown all over Victor. Victor had just arrived from the transfer yards. Now he was covered from buffer to buffer in twigs, soot, and straw. Victor's wheels wobbled and his steam stuttered. <gasps> Sizzling Sodor, what has happened to my beautiful steamworks? Thomas looked at Victor and then at the mess and the muddle. Cinders and ashes, this is all my fault. No, boss, I mean, Thomas, I'm sure it's my fault. I'm sorry, boss, I did try to say, boss. No, Kevin, it's not your fault. I didn't listen to Victor, I didn't listen to you, and I didn't listen to my friends. I was too excited and too silly. I think, my friend, you are right. What will you do now? I'm sorry to all of you. Now I'll listen to you, and I'll make sure you're all fixed properly. So, Victor and Thomas went first to Spencer. I don't need checking from wheels to whistle. I need new paint for my scuffs and scratches. This time, Thomas listened. Don't worry, Spencer. You'll be sparkling silver in no time. That made Spencer very happy. Next, Victor and Thomas talked to Henry. I have my special coal, but there's something wrong with my firebox. It makes me... 
wheeze and sneeze. Don't worry, Henry. Your firebox will be cleaned. You won't wheeze and sneeze anymore. And Thomas was right. Pumping pistons. No more wheezes and sneezes. That's much better. Lastly, Victor and Thomas listened to James. I don't need a new funnel. I need my old funnel cleaned and polished. James, you will have the most perfectly polished funnel on Sodor. Oh. James's funnel was shining like the sun. James smiled from fender to footplate. Soon, all the engines were fixed. They were ready to be really useful again. Well done, my friend. Time to go home. Not quite, Victor. It's time to say thank you to Kevin. Anytime, boss. I mean, Thomas. <laughs> and everyone <laughs> laughed and laughed and laughed. A blooming mess. It was a special day on the island of Sodor. Knapford Station was going to be decorated. All the engines were very busy and very excited. Sir Topham Hatt was at Tidmouth Sheds. Knapford Station is being decorated. There are lots of jobs to do. Thomas, you must go to the quarry and collect slate for the new roof. Yes, sir. Emily, you must go to Maithwaite Station and collect the flowers for the new window boxes. Flowers? How lovely. I know all about flowers. I know that buttercups are yellow. Emily. And then take them to Knapford Station. Yes, sir. Emily huffed happily to Maithwaite Station. She passed Toby. Toby was delivering wood for Knapford's new floors. Hello, Toby. Hello, Emily. Then Emily passed James. James was delivering pots of paint to paint Knapford's new walls. Hello, James. Good morning, Emily. Emily puffed up to a junction. Mavis was on the bridge above. Hello, Mavis. But Mavis didn't say hello to Emily. Emily was surprised. Mavis? Mavis? Hello? Mavis still didn't say hello to Emily. Emily wondered what was wrong with Mavis. I know what's wrong. Mavis must be feeling sad today. At Maithwaite Station, Emily buffered up to the flatbed of flowers. There are a lot of different flowers here, Emily. Emily knew the names of all the flowers, but she didn't say a word. She was thinking about Mavis. She wanted to make Mavis happy. Then, an idea flew into her funnel. I'm sure flowers would make Mavis happy. I have lots of them. I can leave some of them at the quarry for Mavis. So, Emily didn't puff straight to Knapford Station with the flowers. She took the track to the quarry instead. Emily huffed happily into the quarry. She couldn't see Mavis anywhere. I know. I'll decorate the quarry with flowers. That will make Mavis very happy when she comes back. Emily looked for a place to put some flowers. This is the perfect place. Mavis will see the flowers here as soon as she arrives. Emily felt very pleased with herself. Now, hmm, I must find somewhere else to put some more flowers. Emily looked around. 
she didn't see Edward puff into the quarry behind her. But she did hear the loud crash. Fizzling fireboxes! What was that? Edward had crashed straight into the flatbed of flowers and rolled towards the hopper. Edward, look out! Those flowers are going to make Mavis happy. Pardon? Edward was confused. I'm sure flowers by the hopper would make Mavis happy. The hopper's so gray and dusty. Emily felt even more pleased with herself. Now I must find somewhere else to put some more flowers. Emily looked around. She didn't see Thomas reverse towards the hopper behind her. But she did hear the loud crash. Bubbling boilers! What was that? Cinders and ashes! Bust my buffers! Watch out for the flowers! They're going to make Mavis happy! At that moment, Mavis pulled into the quarry. Whatever has happened? Emily looked at Mavis. Mavis wasn't happy. She was very upset. What has happened to my quarry? And what are those flowers doing here? Emily gasped. The flowers haven't made Mavis happy. The quarry is in a terrible mess. And it's all my fault. Emily chuffed up to Mavis. You didn't say hello today, so I thought you were sad. I brought the flowers because I wanted to make you happy. Mavis sighed. I wasn't sad. I didn't say hello because I was thinking about all the jobs I had to do today. Emily felt very silly. I wish I had asked if you were sad. Then I wouldn't have brought the flowers and the quarry wouldn't be in a terrible mess. Mavis looked at the mess. She looked very sad. Emily wanted to think of a way to make Mavis happy. And now she knew she had to ask. Mavis, what would make you happy? I would like the quarry to be tidy and all the engines to be really useful. Emily felt very pleased she had asked Mavis. Now she knew exactly what to do to make Mavis happy. I can't move. I'm covered in slate dust, and my firebox has gone out. Don't worry, Thomas. I'll shunt you over to the coal hopper. You'll soon be burning brightly again. Thank you, Emily. So Emily worked hard. She puffed and she huffed, and she heaved Thomas to the coal hopper. Then, she biffed and she bashed the flower beds away from the hopper so that Edward could shunt his freight cart to be filled. Now, the quarry is tidy again and all the engines are being really useful. Is there anything else that would make you happy? Yes, I want you to deliver the flowers to Knapford Station, where they should be. Right away, Mavis! At last, Emily arrived at Knapford Station. Here are the flowers for the new flower boxes. Thank you, Emily. Emily watched as the flowers were unloaded. They looked very pretty. Did you know, Thomas, that those yellow flowers are called buttercups? And those red ones, Edward, are called roses. And those white ones are daisies. Mavis puffed up. She was smiling. My! You're smiling, Mavis. Are you happy? I am. Those flowers look wonderful. And that made Emily happy, too. Creaky Cranky. It was the spring holiday on Sodor. There was to be a party for the children at the Duke and Duchess's new summer house. 
all the engines were very excited and very busy. Thomas chuffed cheerfully into the docks. James and Henry were passing through. Good morning, James. Good morning, Henry. Where are you puffing to? I'm taking these straw bales to the summer house for the children to climb on. I'm taking wood to make a stage for the children's show and barrels of lemonade to drink. How wonderful. I'll see you later at the summer house. Good morning, Cranky. What's good about it? It's the Duke and Duchess's party day. Party smarty. I don't go to parties. I'm stuck here loading and unloading all day. I haven't had a moment to rest my hook. That load is for me. It's eggs for the children to paint. Hurry up, Cranky. You're creaky, Cranky. What's the matter? Are the eggs too heavy a load for you? <laughs> Cranky didn't like Thomas's joke. He didn't like being called creaky. No, they're not too heavy for me. They're light as fluff. <laughs> You're not strong enough to pull anything heavier than fluff, Tiny Thomas. That's why Henry and James have the heavy loads. Now Thomas didn't like Cranky's joke. Fizzling fireboxes, I'm as strong as any other engine. You're not as strong as me. I can lift much heavier loads than you could ever pull. Thomas really didn't like that. We'll see, Cranky. I have lots of time to deliver the eggs. First, I have to prove Cranky wrong. James has a heavy load. I'll go and find James. So Thomas steams sternly out of the docks. Thomas found James at the junction by the washdown. Hello, James. I don't have a lot of jobs today. Shall I deliver your heavy load of wooden barrels for you? You can stay here at the washdown. Then you'll be perfectly polished for the party. James thought this was a very good idea. Thank you, Thomas. So James was uncoupled from the heavy flatbed of wood, and Thomas was coupled up. The flatbed was heavy. Puffing and puffing, Thomas set off for the docks. Thomas chuffed back into the docks. You again. What are you doing with that wood? This flatbed is very heavy. I'm sure you can't lift it. Cranky looked at the flatbed of wood and barrels. I'm sure I can. Cranky's hook swung low over the wood. Thomas watched and waited. With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, Cranky raised the flatbed into the air. Thomas's boiler buzzed. Told you so. You're still creaky, Cranky. And you're still tiny, Thomas. That made Thomas very cross. I will prove Cranky wrong and still have time to deliver the eggs. I'm sure Henry had an even heavier load. I'll go and find Henry. So Thomas steamed stormily away. Thomas found Henry waiting by the coal hopper for his special coal. Hello, Henry. I don't have a lot of jobs today. Shall I deliver your heavy load of straw bales for you? Then you can wait here for your special coal. Henry thought this was a very good idea. Thank you, Thomas. So Henry was uncoupled from the heavy flatbed of straw bales, and Thomas was coupled up. The flatbed was very heavy. Huffing and puffing, Thomas set off once more for the docks. Soon, Thomas puffed back into the docks. You again. Now, what are you doing with those straw bales? This flatbed is very, very heavy. I'm sure you can't lift this. Cranky looked at the flatbed of straw bales. I'm sure I can. Cranky's hook swung low over the straw. Thomas watched and waited. With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, Cranky raised the flatbed of straw into the air. Thomas's funnel fizzed. Told you so. You're still creaky, Cranky. And you're still tiny, Thomas. That made Thomas even crosser. More than ever, Thomas wanted to prove Creaky Cranky wrong. He had to find the heaviest thing he could. 
Then, an idea flew into his funnel. Lift me, Cranky. Cranky looked at Thomas. He couldn't let Thomas win. Cranky's hook swung low over Thomas. Thomas hardly dared puff. With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, and very, very slowly, Cranky raised Thomas high into the air. Bubbling boilers! Creaky Cranky is lifting me! Then there was trouble. Cranky creaked louder than ever. His crane arm stuttered and juddered. It creaked and it croaked. Then it cracked. Oh, no. Cranky's crane arm had broken, and it was all Thomas's fault. Thomas was stuck high in the sky and blowing in the breeze. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, what are you doing up there? I'm sorry, sir. I was... You are causing confusion and delay. The Duke and Duchess have no wood, straw bales, or eggs. Now I see you have them all here. Cranky is broken, and you, Thomas, think it's a good time to try being a bird. The Duke and Duchess are waiting. Thomas felt very silly. Then Sir Topham Hatt looked at Cranky. And you're as silly as Thomas. Cranky crumpled. The shame to be as silly as a steamy. Soon, a workman had climbed up Cranky. Slowly and carefully, Thomas was lowered and landed with a jolt and a judder, just as Spencer arrived. Dear, oh dear, Thomas, what a mess. Little engines can get into very big trouble. Thomas felt even sillier in front of Spencer. But he knew now that being strong was only good if you were also really useful. And he had to be really useful. Spencer, I need your help. You're very strong and can pull much heavier loads than me. Will you take the wood, the straw bales, and the eggs to the summer house for me, please? It's my fault that Cranky is broken. I must put everything right as quickly as I can. Hmm. Very well. Thank you. I'm sorry, Cranky. I know you're strong, stronger than me. I'll be back soon with the right parts to fix you. Then Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed out of the docks. Thomas wished like the wind all the way to the steamworks. Hello, Victor. Cranky creaked, and now he's cracked. He needs new parts. You've come to the right place, my friend. Parts are plenty here. We'll have Cranky up and lifting in no time. Soon, Thomas's flatbed was loaded with new parts for Cranky. Thank you, Victor. Of course, my friend. Give Cranky my best! And Thomas puffed happily away. Thomas puffed into the docks with his heavy flatbed. Cranky was still looking crumpled. Here you are, Cranky. We'll have you fixed in no time. Thank you, Thomas. That's a heavy flatbed. You know, you're not tiny. And you're not creaky. Cranky laughed. <laughs> and that made Thomas <laughs> laugh, too. <laughs> Playtime. All the engines on the island of Sodor are very happy. They are all pleased to work on Sir Topham Hatt's railway. There is always something new and exciting to look forward to. Like the day the famous singer Alicia Botti came to give a concert at the town hall. Thomas met Percy at the washdown. His boiler bubbled with pride. Hello, Percy. I have a very special special. I must meet Alicia Botti at the docks. Then I have to take her straight to the town hall for a grand concert. That's exciting. I have news, too. Someone else is arriving at the docks. Thomas was puzzled. Charlie, the new engine. Thomas hadn't heard about Charlie. What's so special about Charlie? He's the favorite engine of the mainland controller. Everyone says he is the most fun engine ever. Even more fun than you, Thomas. Percy chuffed cheerfully away. Bumpers and buffers. I don't think any engine is more fun than me. And Thomas puffed off to the docks, his wheels whirring with worry. Thomas collected Alicia Botti at the docks. Miss Botti looked very grand. I'm pleased to be traveling with you, Thomas. Thomas's pistons popped with pride. 
Then he saw Charlie. Charlie's smaller than me, and he certainly doesn't look more fun than me. Hello, are you Thomas? Yes, I am. I'm Charlie. I've heard a lot about you. You have? The engines on the mainland say you're even more fun than me. Thomas was surprised. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, Charlie has a busy first day. Edward has broken down. Charlie must pick up Edward's freight cars of seats from the steamworks. Then he has to collect ice cream from the dairy and red carpet from Knapford Station. If Charlie needs help, I'm sure you will look after him. Yes, sir. Yippee! Want to come with me? Why? It'll be fun. Sorry, I'm busy. I heard you were a fun engine. Maybe you're not fun at all. Thomas didn't like being told he was no fun at all. I'll come with you to the steamworks, and then I'll take Miss Body to the town hall. I'm sure I have plenty of time. So Thomas steamed slowly towards the steamworks, and Charlie followed behind. Thomas chuffed carefully to a junction. Miss Body smiled sweetly from her passenger car. Charlie pulled alongside. This isn't fun. I'll show you fun. <laughs> Thomas couldn't let Charlie be more fun than him. He pumped his pistons, bubbled his boiler, and fizzed his firebox. The race was on. Thomas and Charlie roared and raced. Their funnels were fiery. They were soon red-faced. Alicia Bati could not believe her eyes. My goodness me, this is a surprise. I thought Thomas was steady and slow. What thrills and what fun on the way to my show. The engines were laughing. The race was such fun. You're quick and you're speedy, but I'm number one. With a whoosh and a whoosh, the two engines pulled into the steamworks. Steady, boys. Who is your friend, Thomas? Charlie. He's new. I'm fun! And I'm Alicia Botti. <gasps> Miss Botti, it is an honor to have you visit our steamworks. Kevin! Sorry, boss! And while Charlie was coupled up to Edward's flatbed, Miss Botti sang to the steamworks. <laughs> Then it was time to go. You are fun, Thomas. Let's go to the dairy. Thomas knew he should take Miss Botti straight to the town hall. But he didn't want Charlie to think he wasn't fun. I'm sure I still have time to get Miss Botti to the town hall. So Thomas and Charlie left for the dairy. Soon, the two engines came to a junction. Let's puff down there. We can't. That's a bumpy track. But it'll be fun. Thomas wanted to be fun, so he followed Charlie down the bumpy track. Thomas and Charlie bounced and bumped. Ooh. Alicia Botti <laughs> juddered and jumped. And the couplings jiggered and jiggled looser and looser. At last, Thomas and Charlie pulled up to the dairy. That was fun! <laughs> And this is even more fun. We must go, Miss Body. You mustn't be late for the concert. Bye-bye. If you were a really fun engine, you would race me to Knapford. Thomas knew he was late, but he wanted to be really fun. Just one last race, Charlie. Thomas and Charlie thundered and roared. Thomas thought he had never puffed so fast. I'm first. Let's race again. Then Gordon whooshed past. He was huffing grandly. He was taking Sir Topham Hat to the town hall. Thomas gasped. <gasps> I'm late. I must whoosh like the wind to the town hall. Thomas pumped his pistons, and he chuffed away quickly in a cloud of steam. I mustn't be late! I mustn't be late! Then there was trouble. Thomas didn't know that his couplings had unhooked. Thomas raced on to the town hall, alone. 
Thomas steamed to a stop. His cheeks were redder than James's shiny coat. Here I am, sir. Sir Topham Hatt looked hard at Thomas. Here you are, Thomas. But where are Annie and Clarabelle? And where is Miss Potty? Thomas felt terrible. He had been having fun when he should have been really useful. I'm sorry, sir. I've lost them. Sir Topham Hatt boomed. Then you had better go and find them. Thomas puffed to a junction. He had looked for Annie and Clarabel, but he couldn't find them anywhere. Then Charlie chuffed up. He was on his way to the town hall. Hello, Charlie. I've lost Annie and Clarabel and Miss Body. The couplings must have come loose on the bumpy track and snapped when we were racing. Don't worry, Thomas. I have a good idea. What's that? We'll have a race. Whoever finds Annie and Clarabel first is the number one fun engine. Thomas was stern. He didn't think that was a good idea. No, Charlie. This isn't the time for fun. This is the time for being really useful. I have a very important job to do. And Thomas huffed away. Thomas chuffed carefully. He was very worried. Then Thomas heard singing. He smiled from buffer to buffer. That's Miss Body singing. Hooray! <laughs> Thomas found Miss Body by the bridge. He had never heard anything as beautiful as Miss Body singing. Miss Body must go. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. And Miss Body cheerfully waved goodbye as the crowd clapped and cheered. Thomas puffed to the town hall with Annie and Clarabelle. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. At last, Thomas, you've made Miss Botty very late. Not at all, Bertram. Thomas has made me very happy. I've had the ride of my life. So many people to sing to, and such fun. That made Thomas smile, and so did his fun friend Charlie, Slippy Sodor. It was a very special day on the island of Sodor. The Mr. Bubbles Clown Show was coming to town. Mr. Bubbles was famous. He could blow the biggest bubbles ever seen. All the engines were happy and excited, except for Thomas. He had a cracked funnel and had to puff to the steamworks for repairs. At the steamworks, everything was huffing and puffing and steaming and wishing. Everything except Thomas. He waited sadly on the turntable for Victor to arrive. Thomas didn't like it when he needed repairs. It meant waiting inside and not having fun out on his branch line. Don't look so miserable, Thomas. We'll find you a nice spare funnel and have you out and about in no time. Kevin, let's see what we have for our good friend Thomas. Yes, boss. Coming right up. Sorry, boss. It was a slip of the hook. Oh, Kevin. Well, that won't do at all, my friend. This funnel is much too small. Kevin, let's try something a little larger. Yes, boss. Right away, boss. <laughs> Suffering Sodor, Kevin. What are you doing? Sorry, boss. It was a slip of the hook. Yes, we know, Kevin. We know. Try this one for size, Thomas. No, 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 no. This one is too large. We only have one more spare funnel, boss. I'll be back in two toots of a whistle. Let's hope it's a good fit, my friend, or you'll be here for quite a while. <sighs> here it is, Thomas. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, Thomas. It was a slip of the hook. I know, Kevin. I know. Magnificent. A perfect fit. This funnel makes me feel silly. Not at all, my friend. It's... it's... splendid. It will help you puff very well until your old funnel is fixed. Now chuff along. I hear that Mr. Bubbles has a very special special for you at Brendan Docks. Thomas chuffed into Brendan. He was very unhappy. Mr. Bubbles was waiting. He was very happy to see Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Mr. Bubbles has a very important job for you, Thomas. 
This is my very special bubble liquid. It makes the biggest bubbles you have ever seen. I need it for my show this afternoon. Please take it to Knapford Station. So Thomas backed up slowly and carefully to the flatbed and was coupled up. Now you mustn't spill any of the liquid, Thomas. Puff slowly and carefully. Yes, sir. We'll meet you at Knapford. Then James chuffed up. Hello, Thomas. That's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't want a funny funnel. He wanted his old funnel back. And he didn't like James laughing at his funny funnel. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away as quickly as he could. He forgot all about going slowly and carefully. Later, Thomas stopped at a crossing. He saw Gordon. Hello, Thomas. Oh, that's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't want a funny funnel. He wanted his old funnel back. And he didn't like Gordon laughing at his funny funnel. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away from Gordon as quickly as he could. He wasn't thinking about going slowly and carefully. Bubble liquid splished out and splashed onto the road. But Thomas didn't notice. Sir Topham Hatt was driving Mr. Bubbles on the road. Then there was trouble. The car skidded and skated right into a muddy ditch. Thomas raced on. He stopped at a signal and saw Henry in a siding. Hello, Thomas. Oh, that's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't want a funny funnel. He wanted his old funnel back. And he didn't like Henry laughing at his funny funnel. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away from Henry as quickly as he could. He still wasn't thinking about going slowly and carefully. Sir Topham Hatt and Mr. Bubbles drove toward a bridge. Slow down, Thomas! You're spilling my bubble liquid! But Thomas didn't hear them. More bubble liquid splished out and splashed onto the road. Sir Topham Hatt's car skidded and skated right into a haystack. But Thomas didn't notice. He went even faster. And so did Sir Topham Hatt and Mr. Bubbles. Thomas didn't see them, but he did see a red signal. Thomas put on his brakes. More bubble liquid splished out and splashed onto the road. Sir Topham Hatt's car skidded and skated right into a pond. But Thomas was too worried about his funny funnel to notice. He raced on towards Knapford. At last, Thomas puffed into Knapford, just as Sir Topham Hatt and Mr. Bubbles arrived. Sir Topham Hatt was very cross. Thomas, you were going much too fast. The special bubble liquid splished and splashed out of the tank. And now the tank is empty. And it's almost time for my show to start. The children will be very disappointed. Thomas felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. The only special bubble liquid left is at Brendam Docks. Now, there isn't time to pick it up before the show. Yes, there is. I'm sure I can puff to Brendam and back in time for your show. <laughs> Very well, Thomas. But this time, you must be careful. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And Thomas chuffed quickly away. Soon, Thomas arrived back at Brendam Docks. A new tank of bubble liquid was loaded onto his flatbed, and Thomas puffed carefully away. Thomas saw Edward at a crossing. Hello, Thomas. That's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't like Edward laughing at his funny funnel. But this time, Thomas didn't pump his pistons and race away from Edward as quickly as he could. He chuffed carefully on to Napford. Then, Thomas puffed past some children. The children saw his funny funnel. They were excited. They thought Thomas was going to be part of Mr. Bubbles' show. Thomas was surprised. He gave the children an extra loud toot. 
The children laughed even more. Thomas liked to see the children laughing. They're laughing at my funny funnel. It makes them happy. And that made Thomas happy. Thomas steamed back into Napper. The children cheered. Well done, Thomas. You haven't spilled one drop of my special bubble liquid. And you're just in time for my show. Later, the children clapped and cheered at the Mr. Bubbles Clown Show. They had never seen such big bubbles. Then, the children spotted that Thomas's funny funnel looked just like Mr. Bubbles' hat. Thank you, Thomas, the funniest engine on Sodor. Soon, everyone was laughing, and Thomas most of all. <laughs> Percy's Parcel. It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining in a bright blue sky, and all the engines were very excited. There was to be a special party. It was Sir Topham Hatt's mother's birthday. Sir Topham Hatt arrived at Tidmachet's. He had a special for Thomas. Thomas, you are to collect passengers for the party from Brendam Docks. Thomas was excited. Yes, sir. Percy hoped that Sir Topham Hatt had a special for him, but he didn't. Don't worry, Percy. I'm sure you'll have a special later. But Percy still felt sad. Mavis rolled by and stopped. She could see Percy was unhappy. What's wrong, Percy? I don't have a special. Everybody else does. Don't worry, Percy. I'm sure Sir Topham Hatt will come back with a special special just for you. And when he does, be sure to tell me all about it. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt did come back. Percy was surprised. Percy, you have the most important special of all. You must collect my mother's special birthday parcel from Brendam Docks. Then you must deliver it to the birthday party at Knapford Station. Percy beamed from buffer to buffer. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Percy was excited. Mavis was right. Percy puffed into Brendam Docks. He gasped. The parcel was the most special parcel he had ever seen. Percy was so proud, his firebox fizzed. I must show Mavis straight away. She will be very proud of me. Thomas was at Brendam. He was pleased for his friend. Percy, you have the most important special of all. I know. I'm going to show Mavis my special special straight away. But don't you have to go to Knapford Station? Percy didn't want to listen to Thomas. I have plenty of time to puff to Knapford. First, I will show Mavis my special special. So, Percy set off for the quarry as quickly as he could puff. Percy steamed into the quarry. He looked for Mavis. Mavis was busy. Rocky was loading heavy crates onto freight cars and Mavis was shunting them. It was hard work. Hello, Mavis. Hello, Percy. Look at my special special. I'm sorry, Percy. I can't stop now. I'm too busy. Don't worry, Mavis. I'll wait. Look out, Percy! But it was too late. Oh, no! Rocky dropped his heavy load of slate. Everyone was lost in a thick black cloud of slate dust. At last, the dust cleared. Mavis, Rocky, and Percy were covered in thick gray dust, and so was Percy's special special. Percy was upset. Bubbling boilers, look at the birthday parcel. What am I going to do? Percy thought as hard as he could. At last, an idea flew into his funnel. I'll go to the wash down. My special special will be cleaned there as good as new. Percy, shouldn't you go straight to the party at Knapford? Percy didn't want to listen to Rocky. I'll go to Knapford Station as soon as I've shown Mavis my special special. I still have plenty of time. 
So, Percy steamed quickly away. Percy huffed and puffed to the washdown. James was already there having a polish. My, my, Percy, whatever happened to you? Percy felt very silly. I'd like a very good wash, please. The workmen got straight to work. Water and soapy bubbles sprayed everywhere. Soon, Percy was gleaming green again. But his special special looked terrible. Bubbling boilers! The birthday parcel is wetter than wet! What am I going to do? Percy thought as quickly as he could. At last, another idea flew into his funnel. I'll take my special special to the Sodor Steamworks. Victor will help me. His hot air blowers will dry the birthday parcel. Percy, shouldn't you go straight to the party at Knapford? Percy didn't want to listen to James. I'll go to Knapford Station as soon as I've shown Mavis my special special. I'm sure I still have plenty of time. And Percy chuffed quickly away. Percy raced like the wind to the steamworks. Percy looked for Victor at the steamworks. He couldn't find him anywhere. But he did find a workman. I'd like to be dried as quickly as you can, please. The workman was happy to help. Hot air whooshed and whirred all over Percy and all over his special special. Soon the workman had finished. Percy felt very pleased until he saw the birthday parcel. Wobbling wheels! It's all crinkled and crumpled. What am I going to do? Percy thought as hard as he could. But this time, no ideas flew into his funnel at all. So Percy steamed sadly away. Percy clickety-clacked slowly along the track. Now, he didn't want to show Mavis his special special. He had spoiled Sir Topham Hatt's mother's birthday parcel. And he couldn't go to the party at Knapford now. Percy didn't want anyone to see him. So he chuffed into a siding to hide. He felt terrible. Then he heard Mavis and Edward chuff to the junction. Hello, Mavis. You look happy. I am. I've just picked up these brand new crates. Suddenly, Percy stopped feeling sad, and he started to listen very carefully. Brand new crates? Victor had just delivered them to the steamworks. I've never pulled brand new crates before. Goodbye, Edward. A brand new crate is just what I need. Percy pumped his pistons and puffed away to the steamworks. Hello, Victor. Hello, my friend. How can I help you? I've just seen Mavis with brand new crates. May I have one, please? Well, what for? To put my birthday parcel in. Well, of course you can, Percy. That made Percy very happy. Thank you, Victor. Soon, a new bright red crate was sitting on Percy's flatbed. This will be the grandest parcel Sir Topham Hatt's mother has ever been given. I must hurry now. Everyone will be waiting. Thank you, Victor. And Percy puffed proudly out of the steamworks. Sir Topham Hatt and his mother were waiting at Knapford Station. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Then Percy puffed in. The brand new bright red birthday parcel looked wonderful. Everyone cheered. Happy birthday, ma'am. Here's your very special birthday present. Sir Topham Hatt's mother beamed. And even Sir Topham Hatt smiled. As the workman opened the crate, everyone wanted to see what the present was. Sir Topham Hatt's mother was most excited of all. Then everyone gasped. It was a beautiful portrait of Sir Topham Hatt's mother. Oh, my, Bertram, what a wonderful surprise. I'm very happy. <coughs> That's the most special special I've ever seen, Percy. Percy smiled from footplate to fender. He was sure he was the happiest engine of Thomas and the Runaway Kite. It was a bright blue morning on the island of Sodor. It was the day of the Sodor Kite Festival. 
Soon, the sky would be full of kites of all shapes and colors. The engines were very excited about the kite festival. Thomas was the most excited of all because Thomas liked kites best of all. Thomas puffed into Brendam Docks. He had a very special special. He was to collect the winner's cup for the kite festival. Thomas gasped when he saw the cup. Oh my, that's the most beautiful cup I've ever seen. Thomas, you must deliver the winner's cup to Knapford Station. Lady Hat will give it to the winner at tea time. Thomas beamed from buffer to buffer. Yes, sir. I will chuff straight there. Thomas puffed proudly. He wanted everyone to see that he was pulling the winner's cup. Thomas pulled up to a junction. High in the sky, above the treetops, he saw a kite. Fizzling fireboxes. What a wonderful kite. I hope I will see it again. Thomas huffed and chuffed to the top of Gordon's Hill. Then he gasped. There's that wonderful kite again. The kite belonged to Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren. <laughs> they wanted to win the cup at the kite festival. Charlie puffed up. Look at that kite swoop through the air. Look, there's Thomas. Suddenly, a gust of wind pulled at the kite. The kite flew up, 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 and away. Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren watched. They were very sad. Thomas wanted to help them. Don't be sad. I'll chase after your kite and bring it back to you. This made the children very happy. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. I can catch up with your kite. I'll help you, Thomas. No, thank you, Charlie. I'm much faster than you. I can chase this kite all by myself. So, Thomas didn't go straight to Knapford with the winner's cup. He chuffed off, chasing Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's runaway kite. The wind blew the kite far down the tracks. Thomas whooshed and whooshed. His boiler bubbled. His coal crackled. I must keep up with the runaway kite. I'll puff and I'll huff with all of my might. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. Then the wind blew the kite out of sight. Where has the kite gone? Hello, Thomas. You're huffing hard. Hello, Edward. I'm chasing Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's kite. How exciting. Can I help? No, thank you, Edward. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. I can chase their kite all by myself. At last, Thomas caught up with the kite. He was excited. Then, the wind blew the kite another way. Cinders and ashes, come back, Mr. Kite, please. Thomas chased and raced. I must keep up with the runaway kite. I'll puff and I'll huff with all of my might. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. Then the wind blew the kite up over the bridge. Emily was on the bridge. She saw the kite. She was surprised. Hello, Thomas. Are you chasing that kite? Yes, Emily. It is blown away from Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren. I've promised I'll catch it. Can I help? No, thank you, Emily. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. I can chase it all by myself. And Thomas whooshed on under the bridge. Thomas clattered and clacked. I must keep up with the runaway kite. I'll puff and I'll huff with all of my might. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. What's wrong, Thomas? Your cheeks are as red as James's boiler. I'm chasing that kite. Let me help. I can chase it with you. No, thank you. I can chase this kite all by myself. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. 
So, Percy chuffed off, and Thomas puffed on. At last, the wind dropped. The kite landed in front of Thomas, near a junction. Thomas was pleased. Bubbling boilers, I've caught up with you now, Mr. Kite. Thomas whooshed across the junction towards the kite. Then there was trouble. Thomas started juddering and jittering. The flame in Thomas's firebox flickered and fizzled out. Thomas had burned all his coal chasing the runaway kite. Oh my! Oh no! I've run out of coal! Then the wind blew again. The kite flew high in the sky and was gone. I can't puff anymore. I can't chase the kite. I'm not the fastest engine on Sodor. I've broken my promise to the children and... I haven't delivered the winner's cup to Knapford Station. Thomas felt terrible. It's all my fault. Suddenly, Thomas heard an engine chuffing around the corner. It was Charlie. What's wrong, Thomas? I ran out of coal trying to chase the kite. I thought you were the fastest engine on Sodor. I'm not. I was silly to think I could catch the kite on my own. Will you help me, Charlie? Of course I will, Thomas. Charlie gave Thomas some of his coal. Soon, Thomas's firebox was burning brightly. Thank you, Charlie. I'm late. I must deliver the winner's cup to Knapford Station. Can you look for the kite, please? With all my huff and chuff, Thomas. So, Thomas puffed to Knapford with the winner's cup. On his way to Knapford, Thomas stopped at a junction. Percy, Emily, and Edward were waiting. You look sad, Thomas. I didn't catch Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's kite. Will you all help me? Of course we will, Thomas. Right away. With no delay. Thomas's friends were happy to help him, and Thomas was happy to be helped. Thomas arrived at Knapford Station with the Winner's Cup. Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren raced over. Hi, Thomas. They hoped Thomas had found their kite. I haven't found your kite, but all my friends are looking for it now. Come with me. So the children climbed cheerfully on board. Thomas puffed to a junction. Suddenly, the kite flew in front of Thomas. There's the kite. Emily, Percy, Edward, and Charlie chuffed to the junction. The kite danced between them. Then. It caught its tail on the signal. Hooray! We've caught the kite! The engines tooted, the children cheered. <laughs> With the help of my friends, we caught the kite. And later that day, at the kite festival, Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's kite danced best of all. As the wind blew it high up in the sky, and Thomas smiled and smiled. The early bird. On the island of Sodor, all of the engines on Sir Topham Hatt's railway are busy. Gordon pulls the express. Percy delivers the mail. And Thomas puffs and chuffs cheerfully on his branch line. One morning, Thomas's fireman fanned his firebox ready for work. Thomas saw that his best friend Percy wasn't there. Good morning, James. Have you seen Percy? No, I have too much to do to see Percy. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, Percy has popped a piston. He has to go to the steamworks to be fixed. Percy won't be able to deliver the mail tomorrow morning. You must do it for him. Thomas was excited. He had never delivered the mail before. He tooted his whistle loudly. Yes, sir. I've always wanted to deliver the mail. Make sure you do a good job, Thomas. Of course I will, sir. Don't worry, sir. Then Thomas puffed proudly away to his branch line. Thomas stopped at a crossing. Gordon was there. Percy is being fixed. Tomorrow, I'm going to deliver the mail run for him. 
Percy's mail run? Have you asked Percy how to do it? Don't worry, Gordon. I know all about delivering the mail. <laughs> do you indeed? Then the gate opened, and Thomas puffed quickly away. Thomas worked hard all day. That night, he went to see Percy at the steamworks. Percy didn't look happy. Is your piston fixed, Percy? No, it's still broken. Don't worry. I'm going to do your mail run tomorrow. Thank you, Thomas. Shall I tell you what to do? I know what to do, Percy. Now, I have to go to sleep. I shall be up very early. Well, if you're sure, Thomas. Very sure, Percy. I have to go back to Tidmouth now. I need lots of sleep. Goodbye. Percy watched as Thomas chuffed away. The next morning, Thomas woke up very early. He felt very proud to be pulling the mail trucks. There wasn't a peep to be heard as Thomas chuffed across the island. Everyone was fast asleep. First, Thomas puffed to the quarry. I must let the quarry manager know that the mail is here. Thomas was excited. He blew his whistle very loudly. And then he chuffed cheerfully away. Thomas hadn't seen that his loud whistle had woken up Mavis. Oh, who's making that noise? Next, Thomas chuffed to the docks. I must let the dock manager know that the mail is here. Thomas was excited. He blew his whistle even louder. <sighs> and then he chuffed cheerfully away. What Thomas hadn't seen was that his good morning whistle had woken Cranky up. <sighs> Who woke me up? This is fun! Lastly, Thomas steamed into the steamworks. I must let the steamworks manager know that the mail is here. Thomas was so excited, he blew his whistle louder than ever. Oh. Oh. And then he huffed happily away. What Thomas hadn't seen was that he had woken Victor and Kevin up. Oh, what's that noise, boss? Uh, who knows, Kevin, who knows? Some early bird. Thomas worked hard all morning. Everywhere Thomas went, he blew his whistle loudly. Delivering the mail is fun! Soon, Thomas had delivered all the mail. It was time for him to puff back to Tidmouth Sheds for a rest. As Thomas passed through the quarry, he saw Mavis. Her freight cars were being loaded with slate. Then there was trouble. Mavis hadn't lined up her freight cars under the hopper. Slate spilled everywhere. That's strange. Mavis never makes mistakes. What Thomas didn't see was that Mavis was fast asleep under the hopper. That's why she had put the freight cars in the wrong place. Next, Thomas passed through the docks. Cranky was unloading some big crates from a ship. Then there was trouble. Cranky dropped the crates. They fell to the ground with a smash and a crash. That's strange. Cranky never makes mistakes. What Thomas didn't see was that Cranky had fallen fast asleep. That's why he had dropped the crates. Thomas pulled into Tidmouth's sheds. He wanted to tell Percy all about the mail delivery, but Percy wasn't there. Sir Topham Hatt was there. He was cross. 
Someone woke Mavis up too early by tooting too loudly on their whistle. Then someone woke up Cranky at the docks and Victor at the steamworks. Now they have all made silly mistakes. Thomas knew he had woken everyone up with his cheerful whistle. He felt terrible. I'm very sorry, sir. It was me. Then, Thomas, as Percy is still not fixed, you must do a better job tomorrow. I will, sir. I promise, sir. Then Gordon arrived. He had heard all about Thomas's trouble with the mail run. You were right, Gordon. Delivering the mail is a hard job. I should have asked Percy what to do. And this time, I will. That evening, Thomas visited Percy at the steamworks. He asked him all about delivering the mail, and Percy told him all about being quiet. The next morning, Thomas set off early, pulling the mail cars. He stopped at the quarry. This time, he didn't blow his whistle. He puffed very quietly so that he didn't wake Mavis. Next, Thomas stopped at the docks. He didn't blow his whistle here either, and he didn't wake Cranky up. Lastly, Thomas puffed into the steamworks. He dropped off the mail, and he didn't blow his whistle once. Victor stayed fast asleep. But Percy had woken up early to see his best friend, Thomas. Well done, Thomas. You did everything right. Thank you, Percy. Now I know the most important thing about delivering the mail. You have to do it quietly. Percy was so happy for his friend that he wanted to toot out loud. Then he looked at Thomas. Thomas had fallen fast asleep. Sleep well, Thomas. And Thomas snored the sleep of an engine who had done a very good job. Double trouble. All the engines were very excited. They chuffed cheerfully and chattered as they clattered along the tracks. Today was Sir Topham Hatt's birthday, and there was to be the grandest birthday party on Sodor. Thomas had a very special special. He was to pick up Sir Topham Hat and Lady Hat for the party. As Thomas approached Maithwaite Station, he gasped. <gasps> Ahead, he could see Sir Topham Hat already on the platform. Cinders and ashes, I must be late. Thomas pulled into the station. He was worried. I'm sorry, sir. I thought I was early. Sir Topham Hat turned around. Thomas gasped. <gasps> Sir Topham Hat had a mustache. Thomas was so surprised, he nearly popped a piston. Thomas, my good friend, you're looking perfectly polished today. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Sir Topham Hat chuckled so loudly, his top hat wobbled. Thomas was puzzled. Sir Topham Hat never chuckled so loudly that his top hat wobbled, and Sir Topham Hat never called Thomas his good friend. I know, Thomas. Let's go to the Whispering Woods. It's one of my favorite spots. We have plenty of time before the party. All aboard! Now Thomas was even more puzzled. He wanted to ask about Sir Topham Hatt's new mustache and why he was acting so strangely. But Thomas didn't want to look silly. So he decided not to ask. Thomas pulled away from Maithwaite Station and chuffed towards the Whispering Woods. Thomas puffed up to the Whispering Woods. Edward was there. Edward had brought children to visit the woods. Then he was to take them to the party. Hello, Edward. Hello, Thomas. You look worried. Thomas was worried. But before he could explain, Sir Topham had climbed down. Marvelous! What fun! Please, sir. Uh, we can't stay long. The children mustn't be late for the party. Oh, party smarty, Thomas. We have plenty of time. You worry too much. And Sir Topham Hatt strode off. <laughs> Hello, children. Who'd like a game of hide-and-seek? Did Sir Topham Hatt say a game of hide-and-seek? Yes, he did. And Thomas's wheels wobbled with worry. 
Sir Topham Hatt played hide and seek for a long time. He was very happy. So were the children. Edward was puzzled. Sir Topham Hatt never plays hide and seek. I know. And what's that on his face? A mustache. It just appeared. Today, Sir Topham Hatt doesn't seem like Sir Topham Hatt at all. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt came back. Thomas wanted to ask him if he was feeling all right, but he didn't want to look silly. Thomas knew that silly engines weren't really useful engines, so he didn't ask any questions. We must hurry now, sir. We'll be late. And so will the children. But Sir Topham Hatt wasn't worried. Don't hurry the children, Edward. Let them play. Edward was so surprised his boiler bubbled. Then Sir Topham Hatt jumped aboard Annie and waved to all the children. Thomas's wheels clickety clacked. He puffed and he huffed along the track. He knew they were late for the party. Thomas stopped at the junction. Suddenly, Sir Topham Hatt jumped out of Annie and climbed up to the signal box. I won't be a moment, Thomas. Thomas was amazed. So was the signalman. Sir Topham Hatt never came into his signal box. Hello there. May I have a turn? Thomas looked up. He saw Sir Topham Hatt pull a lever. Then Thomas heard Gordon's whistle. Cinders and ashes. Here comes Gordon. Gordon had all the important visitors aboard the express. He was taking them to the party. With a clang and a clatter, the points changed. Gordon and the express were no longer on the express track. They were now on a branch line heading away from the party. Thomas heard Sir Topham Hatt whoop for joy. Hooray! Fizzling fireboxes. I must ask Sir Topham Hatt why he's being so strange. But when Sir Topham Hatt came down from the signal box, Thomas didn't say anything. He still didn't want to look silly. What fun! All aboard, Thomas! Thomas raced towards Maithway. Lady Hat would be waiting. They were very late. Thomas was worried. First, Sir Topham Hat had a mustache. Next, he wanted to play hide and seek with the children. Then he sent Gordon off the express line and away from the party. Hmm. Sir Topham Hat is acting very strangely indeed. Thomas puffed into Maithwaite. The station master was cross. Thomas, you are late. Sir Topham and Lady Hat had to go to the party and Bertie the bus. But Bertie hasn't arrived at the party. Neither have the children or the very important visitors. Thomas was puzzled. If Sir Topham Hat is on Bertie, then who is on board Annie? Just then, Thomas's passengers stepped down. Thomas knew he had to ask a question he hadn't asked before, even if he looked silly. Excuse me, Sir Topham. You don't quite seem yourself today. Is everything all right? Thomas's passenger beamed brightly. Yes, Thomas, but I'm not Sir Topham Hat. I'm Sir Loam Hat, Sir Topham's brother. Thomas was amazed. That explained everything. But he wished now that he had asked his question earlier. Now there was no time to waste if he wanted to be a really useful engine. Bertie must have broken down. We must find him right away. Sir Topham Hat's brother was very excited. Hooray! Another game of hide and seek! Now Thomas was stern. No, Sir Loam Hat. I have to work hard and quickly. Otherwise, your brother's party will be spoiled. Sir Loam boarded Annie, and Thomas puffed away. Thomas found Bertie the bus. Smoke billowed from his engine. Bertie looked very unhappy. So did Sir Topham and Lady Hat. Thomas, where have you been? Just then, Sir Topham Hatt's brother stepped down from Annie. Sir Topham Hatt sighed. Oh, no, Loam. Have you been up to your old tricks again? Absolutely right, Topham. I've been having a wonderful time with Thomas. Sir Topham Hatt didn't think this was funny at all. Loam, you have caused confusion and delay. We must hurry. Thomas delivered Sir Topham Hatt, his brother, and Lady Hatt to the party just in time. The party looked grand, but Thomas couldn't stay. 
he had work to do. First, Thomas chuffed to the whispering woods. Edward was very happy to see Thomas. Go straight to the party with the children, Edward. Sir Topham Hatt is waiting. It was his brother, Sir Loam, who was playing hide and seek. Next, Thomas found Gordon. Gordon was huffing and puffing as slowly as a snail down a rickety branch line. Oh, the indignity. Hurry, Gordon, to the next express line. Race like a rocket to the party. That made Gordon very happy. At last, Thomas chuffed back to the party. Edward and Gordon were already there. What a wonderful party! And it was. Everyone was laughing. Then Thomas and his friends heard something very extraordinary. Sir Topham Hatt chuckled even louder than his brother. And that made Thomas happiest of all.